gets that win, he's back in this series. Sometimes you gotta have to do things your own way, whether Stork told him to do that or not. I think that was Solar's own way back into the series. That's what he wanted to do, and he did it. And now we've got a real series on our hands, because I think Solar is highly favored on Fire and Terraces to take this next game and tie it up. Yeah, we'll see how Stats wants to play on this map. Could play a very defensive kind of three base play, as he has been doing so far. Very slowly take that forward once he feels comfortable. Uh, but I wonder what Solar's going to do, too. He could try to go aggressive. He's going to have uh, massive amounts of units, obviously, with two gold bases. Let's jump into the map right now between Stats and Solar for game number, number four. Here we are on Prion Terraces. Stats once again going for an early scout here. And up in the top left, the Protoss player whose name I already said, it's Stats. You really just wanted to get into that game. Yes. Getting too excited. Down here is... trying to block that. I'm sorry. Go uh, ahead. Down here's <laughs> opponent in blue is Solar. Yes, you are correct. Sue has lost again. I read only the English part. I'm cheating. That's it. I don't even want to read the rest. <laughs> it says Kangmin Sue on the left. That means uh, Solar. And then he made it, uh, you know, like it spells something or whatever. Uh oh. Brandon broke the game. Your computer lost. I swear somehow. I didn't kick any wires. I don't even have my feet close to it. But, uh. I'm like yes. gonna take a picture of your computer since attempting to correct and post on Twitter, and the fangirls are gonna come up here and kill you. No, it I was all that. my fault. You're my you're my friend and, and longtime co commentator. I would never do that to you. This is really unfortunate. I don't know what the, the issue is. Yeah. I really didn't even have my feet near the cords. So. No, I think you're just gonna I mean it's just you're gonna time out and actually you could just press surrender right now and you it'll kick you. You could do you that. You think I should do that? <laughs> not anymore <laughs> now because then it would suddenly put us back into the game and that's not what the players want, so I would actually say let it time out at this point. I don't know how much time we have left because we're looking at cheerfuls instead of the game, but yeah, just let yourself time out. In fact, if our producer could maybe tell people that in fact that they probably don't know it's your computer, maybe we could I just want to make sure. I want to make sure this is legit because that pro block is still going on right now. Yeah, this is like a really key point in the game. Um, yeah, huh. it's all right. Okay, there you go. You're kicked, even though your computer isn't. Um, you're out of the game. They kicked you, I think. Okay, so no observer computer for this game. That's okay. That's all right. The integrity of the players is better than our commentary and seeing how many units. On the yeah, tab, which is basically what we use in the group for sometimes. <laughs> Production tab, unit tab, stuff like that. Upgrades. So he did get the hatchery up, which is important. The yeah, third hatchery. Very far away. You know, I wonder if Stats is going to try to follow this up with any kind of aggressive play. Uh, I'm not so sure. I think he's got two gates at the front. Maybe that's just a Cybernetics score coming up, actually. Yeah, it looks like just yeah, one gate just for now. Gate. You're right. And uh, I suppose he could try to put some pressure on the third base, but nothing happening just yet. Yeah, it's still uh, still too early to tell. But usually on a map like this in a best of seven, you have a plan, especially because this is the map that... The reason why I mentioned this map specifically is because the map where Zerg is considered to be quite favored, right? Um, he came to see stats go to the finals. I promise I can read this. Yeah, he, um, he may get his wish. Yeah. Yeah. But as I was saying, you know, the map where Zerg's really favored, maybe you have a really crazy out there strategy, almost like a throwaway strategy you wouldn't use on any other map, and you aggressively send that probe out like you were talking about, which is really important. Block the hatchery because you have a follow-up plan. And if you lose, you're like, well, we're 2-2. I might have lost this map if I played straight up anyways. Um, and I'm exaggerating this, but I'm doing it to make a point. Uh, maybe what yeah, we're going to see mean, here. I definitely agree with you. I think on certain maps where maybe you're not confident, you're, you're not feeling it you know i feel like it would feel worse to play your heart out and just get crushed you know especially on a map like this um i was talking to Tasis the other day he's like I, I forget what the map name was but for brood he's like i was just always all in on this map like i just never played it straight up i'm like yeah, it makes sense you know it's like tau cross for sure like <laughs> <laughs> wasn't that one I no i know it wasn't I, i'm sure it wasn't tau cross but not like i did on tau cross I'm pretty much just all in every game i play like <laughs> i 
<laughs> like when I play Heroes of the Storm, I like do all-in builds and like talents that don't make sense. But I'm like, nah, this is just how I like to play. And I'll never Ooh, get high ranked. We got another Baneling Nest on the map. All right, so let's think really deep here. Okay, you could block the you could block the Nexus with the Lings, but then he could burrow Banelings in the mineral line and wait oh, until man. the probes saturate and then blow up. That's, That's like only disgusting. happened. Only happened like two or three times in Korean pro games, but when it does yeah. happen, everyone loses their minds. That's an old strat. Yeah. You know, that's a... Uh, it's an old one, but a good one. Yeah. Uh, Checks I'm, out. I'm just I, I'm just being facetious at this point, but we'll see. He is blocking the hatchery, or rather the uh, Nexus, in fact. Speaking of big swell of lings, he is going to need it for the defense of the Adepts regardless. He may actually just do a Baneling all-in this time. Making this many lanes. He's only on 35 drones, and he doesn't necessarily need that many drones to saturate these gold bases. He's going to use these initially to block the adept push, but this is not an adept all in, so he will need to transition or you know commit further to this type of play. Even though Stats doesn't have a third base, the lack of drones is hurting his economy, hurting Solar's economy right now. Look at this, he's gonna try to go for this around, and here come the Bailings. Goodbye, Adepts! They do oh. get, three of them do get away. Four of them, actually. Yeah, it looks like, uh, like a, not the most direct hits he's gonna hope for. This base is still denied. In fact, both bases denied. I really like how much Solar is committing to this unorthodox play style of using burrowed links to block these hatcheries. All right, Oracle on the way. Last time he did not commit to this, but this time he will have that detection a lot faster. He's, his forge is also later this game, so that's another factor. Yeah. He's really desperate to get that detection out. He can't sit on two base forever. We have Solar back at home, droning up now, going up to about 49 drones. And we'll probably take a fourth base here in just a bit. And I think we'll just transition into a more normal game. We do have him going for the plus one melee again. Yeah, it looks like he really wants to prove to the world that this is a thing. You know, like Baneling Hydra Lurker is a comp that you can build. Yeah, it's so funny too because like the tried and tested standard, which is just Roach, Hydra, Lurker at this point, is it works, you know? The Protosses have trouble with that, so I, I'm not too sure why he's mixing it up. You know, maybe these guys have a history playing on, you know, the ladder or just custom games or whatever, and uh, he knows that stats is really good against Lurker, so he wants to try to mix it up, go for different timings and stuff like that. Uh, I, I think it's a good idea, too, in a best of seven to mix up your, your strategy. You don't want to play the same game on seven different maps, but play the same way. Yeah. We're going to see another queen get picked off here. Sad days. I like that aggressive spore that Solar has on top of his army. It makes it a little bit tougher for him to pick off Banelings. He did get them anyways, but Adept's coming across the map now with this. I don't know where the shades are. Looks like they're probably defensive shades, yep. And he's doing a little bit of poke damage. Sats finally does have his third Nexus nearly completed. He's doing a lot of harasser damage with these Phoenixes. I, I really like Sats' position in this game, to be honest. Uh, he's dealt with this comp before. He knows what to do. And he's getting a lot of damage just like before. This time there's no burrowed uh, roaches harassing him either while he's out here doing this harass. So he's getting a lot more value. Yeah, that early play from Solar really just didn't check out. It didn't do the damage that he wanted. And uh, he did defend well. You know, there, there is that, but uh, Stant's definitely getting in a bit of a better situation here. Wolf just tried to use my computer. I it doesn't did. work. Sorry, I wanted Wolf. to see if he went for... I wanted to see if he got Overlord speed, but... Uh, I don't think he did. No, I, I so, don't believe so. I don't think we're going to be seeing any speed bane drops. Look, is he even going to make a wall? Stats are like, I have dealt with this before. I did not play when uh, Xenix line uh, or, <laughs> you know, those other Zergs that all end all the time on Xenix were in play, like in Wings Delivery in 2010, 2011. So I didn't play during that time, but I still know how to deal with Banes. Okay, you make a wall, you use force fields, and, you know, you. They're melee units. Oh, hiding the Hydra, setting the trap. I like this. This is smart. He's going to get one Phoenix, maybe two. Ooh, that one just so, so low, but it does survive. Good reaction time by stats. If he was doing anything else, every Phoenix dies. <laughs> yeah. If he stops over the Hydras and they get unburrowed, for sure. And uh, I like the pylons, too, because you can get so many overcharges down there. You know, get four of them down uh, with their Mothership Core if it is at full energy. And he's got them in the line there to get this fourth base, too. Ling does, <laughs> does go down. Blocks it for one more moment. Here we go. Stats knows what's up, though. He has four sentries this time. Really would mi wouldn't mind to see him warp in more. He is a big star for gas. Four Banes. But look at this. There's a wall and a stasis ward as well. 
That's Whoa. a Bailing's worst nightmare. Okay, here we go, Valdez! Overcharge is going up. There's a time warp as well. Huge Stasis hitting mostly Lings. There's yep, still a lot of Bailings left. Look at the force fields, though. There are a lot of force fields left over, and the pylons are being forced focused down so, so fast. The Hydra's now getting a really nice round, and here come the Bailings. Nothing will survive. Only you Immortals left. And I don't this think is, that's enough. This is not enough. Bailings coming in. They're going to wreck the Mineral Line. 14 probes die instantly. And now he's just going to continue to push forward. This comp, I, I, I think I see it. I think I get it now. <laughs> Zealot's warping to die. And I guess that is going to be all she wrote here for game number four. Two Bailings going to hit this Mineral Line. Not a single probe split. This fourth base not happening. No cancel. And charge is finished. That's great. So the Banelings can kill the Zealots even faster. Wolf. Yeah. Where are these probes going? Where are you going, probes? I mean, getting decent lifts here, but he's got nothing behind it. He's got two Immortals warping at three. GG! Solar! When you think about it, uh, it makes there, you know, it makes sense that uh, you would build a comp like this because it breaks through buildings. It will destroy pylons easily. What are you going to deal with it when you use Zealots when you're low on gas and you, know, you try to warp on Zealots desperately? We saw that. Stats even tried that. Didn't work out. Um, the, uh, the the other thing to keep in mind is I look at Brent's having a computer problem on his uh, on his yeah. computer, so I was like freaking out about that a little bit. Uh, hopefully we'll get him back into the, the game for the next game. But you've got Immortals at the back, but they can't deal with Banelings very quickly. You don't have AoE yet. What are you going to warp in? Stalkers? Not really going to be very helpful. And the Hydras deal with everything else once the Zealots are gone. And if you don't have Storm, even if you have... Like I was thinking, about, I said it even on the cast, I was like, well, you're going to see more sentries maybe for more force fields? But then what? The Hydras shoot over yeah. the force fields and kill your army. I mean, if you consider the last game that Solar tried to play this on, it was on Dust Towers. And uh, that's a gigantic two-player map. It's not quite like Pran Terraces. Uh, with the economy of that map, Solar was able to get so many more links and therefore Bane links out there. And uh, that definitely, you know, that helped in getting just that huge amount of Bane links that was enough to push over. Of course, there's no ramp there too, so, so it was very hard for stats to defend as well. All right, just trying to resolve the uh, internet problem. Yeah.